Dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor, I am a clinical oncologist, practicing since 2010. Today I want to talk to you about the uh, probiotics, the bacteria that we can take as supplements to restore our gut microbiome. Gut microbiome is a very interesting topic nowadays, it's very highly investigated, because we know that our bacteria is the organ of our body, because any problem, any disease of the bacteria, any dysbiosis, disbalance, will lead to many dif different diseases and conditions. You can have skin problems, you can have uh, depression, you can have a digestive issue, uh, weight gain, loss of the, your weight, you can have uh, a lot of inflammation, joint problems, dermatitis, and even oncological diseases, even cancer. That's why many scientists of the world study microbiome, study different uh, diseases and uh, connection with uh, bacteria, study probiotics in different diseases, because probiotics can be a nice adjunctive uh, treatment for many conditions, like for example diabetes or uh, diseases of the guts and uh, stomach or GERD or depression or uh, Parkinson's disease for example or allergic diseases maybe multiple sclerosis, cancer, etc. This is not the only probiotic video. I will make a playlist on probiotics. Please check it in the channel. How you can use probiotics in other diseases, um, for example, in gut diseases or in uh, gastrointestinal immune diseases, in obesity, diabetes, uh, to slow down aging, for example. So check it, please. And this uh, video is about the cancer and probiotics. So let's start. Probiotics can possibly protect us from cancer and can possibly be good uh, in the patients who already have cancer. How do they work? Well, there are many functions. They have, can bind, they can uh, neutralize the um, cancerogenic substances that cause cancer. They can decrease inflammation, then can, they can modulate immunity, uh, they can regulate pH of our, uh, of our guts, they produce uh, short-chain fatty acids that kill tumors, that uh, they, are, they are also absorbed into the blood, they regulate our body uh, organs, uh, the function of our brain, the, uh, the function of our heart, the pulse rate, uh, their inflammation, they uh, feed the liver, they support the liver. And of course they help in digestion of many substances, for example fiber, fermentable fiber, uh, fermented fiber, uh, and um, produce some vitamins. Most common probiotic species are Lactobacillus, uh, uh, Bifidobacterium, and some yeasts like Saccharomyces. These are mostly studied, but there are many other uh, types of uh, bacteria that can be used uh, as uh, supplements. I told you about vitamins. Look, uh, some probiotics can produce, for example, folate, riboflavin, like vitamins of uh, B group. Uh, they can uh, produce omega-3, uh, fatty acids, they can uh, help in lactose intolerance to digest lacto lactose. And uh, there is a nice um, review of uh, 34 studies on animals. They were giving uh, that animals their cancerogenic substance to cause uh, colorectal cancer. And if these uh, rats received probiotics, there was a lower chance to get cancer and their cancer was not as huge and big. That's, that is protective effect of probiotics uh, in uh, the case of uh, colorectal cancer. As I told you already, they produce some substances that are anti-cancerous. For example, we know that uh, Lactobacilli uh, casei and many other um, bacteria, they produce uh, special substances to uh, bind uh, the metals. For example, um, they produce uh, ferrochrome to bind iron uh, from insoluble to make it um, soluble and so they can use it. Uh, th but this substance also has anti-cancer activity. For example, it was compared with cisplatin and fluorouracil and it was not less effective or even more effective. But um, we know that these two substances, they are very toxic and uh, ferrochrome was not as toxic. That's why it's a nice potential anti-cancer 
a substance. Uh, maybe it will be used in future, I hope so. Or, for example, shorter chain fatty acids, uh, they can inhibit proliferation of cancer cells. One more list of preclinical studies. We see there a type of uh, bacteria of probiotic, for example, Enterococcus, or Lactobacilli, different types, or uh, Streptococcus, Propioni bacteria. Uh, this is type of cancer. It's a colon cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, head neck cancer. And this is the type of probiotics, mostly life, but also we know that dead probiotics uh, or different components they produce, uh, they also cause anti-cancer effect because they can do it directly on the tumor or they can stimulate immunity. That's why not only life probiotics are working. How do they do that? Through self-apoptosis, cell apoptosis, tumor kills itself. Uh, then uh, it will decrease the growth and development of uh, tumors. It will activate immunity against the tumor and it will uh, decrease the potential of metastasizing. And also there are some human trials uh, in breast cancer or colorectal cancer, for example, and we will talk about it a little bit later. This is the article about the prevention of, uh, of breast cancer with uh, fermented milk products. Fermented milk products are milk products that are fermented by uh, bacteria and uh, they contain a lot of bacteria. And they observed that there is a connection between uh, intake of, for example, yogurt or uh, buttermilk or um, young cheese or kefir, for example, and the risk of breast cancer. And there is no connection between cancer risk and just milk because milk is not rich in bacteria. Breast cancer patients are more likely to take less fermented milk products. This is Japanese investigation. They have this Lactobacillus casei shirota a drink, like bio-yogurt, something like bio-yogurt. I'm sorry, I'm not Japanese. I never tried it I, if I don't explain correctly what exactly it is, but as I understand. And they found out that uh, patients having breast cancer versus healthy patients, uh, they drink uh, this uh, fermented uh, milk product less than four times a week. And who drink it more than four times a week, more often, uh, he has, uh, she has a uh, much lower risk of breast cancer. This is their double-blind placebo control investigation on patients with colon cancer. Uh, they got surgery and in one month, some patients got uh, probiotics, some patients got placebo. Probiotics had uh, three species of lactobacillus and three species of bifidobacterium. And they took it for six months in quite high doses. It's like 30 billion of colony forming units. You can always see on their uh, boxes with probiotics how much units it contains. There was no surgical infection, uh, no need of antibiotics, no adverse reactions connected to probiotics, and they had a significantly lower inflammation in the body because cancer patients, they often almost always have a lot of inflammation. Uh, you can see high uh, ESR, uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate or C-reactive protein, for example, in these patients, uh, and the chronic and systemic inflammation is connected to cancer. That's why it's good to decrease it. Also, it will improve the appetite in these patients. And other investigation about yogurt consumption and risk of uh, gut cancer. It's prospective, it's good, it's big. It's more than 45,000 of uh, volunteers. Some were taking yogurt um, systematically and others were not. And they were followed up for 12 years. And among them, almost 300 volunteers got colorectal cancer. And they found out that those who were not taking yogurt were more, high, more likely to get this colon cancer. That means probably uh, probiotics, and these are natural probiotics, decrease risks of cancer. Now, one more systemic review. Uh, they investigated if probiotics can help patients receiving chemotherapy to decrease diarrhea. 11 studies on patients, uh, they found out that, yes, really, severity and frequency of diarrhea can be reduced 
and the need in anti-diarrhea medications is reduced. And 17 studies were investigating their risks and adverse reactions. And there were only occasional cases of uh, adverse reactions like uh, sepsis or they found uh, their yeasts in the blood or even they found uh, the heart infection in one patient. But all these patients were with serious uh, diseases and uh, it's not clear if this is uh, totally due to probiotics or uh, due to their condition. And also one more uh, big review with meta-analysis. Uh, it uh, investigated their randomized clinical trials on patients with breast cancer. These trials, they, tr they prescribed uh, just lactobacillus or, uh, with, uh, or, or combination with bifidobacterium or with prebiotic or with also streptococcus or enterococcus. And uh, most effective were combinations lactobacillus with bifidobacterium plus streptococcus or enterococcus. And uh, this effect may be better when you use also prebiotic to feed and protect these probiotics. And it could help to decrease obesity, very important, especially in hormone-dependent, hormone-associated cancers, because we don't want very high levels of hormones that are produced in fat tissue, uh, because these hormones will make the cancer grow faster. Uh, next, uh, it can help some, somewhat with uh, lymphedema of the uh, hand, of the arm. That is the often seen problem in breast cancer survivors. And it's better to take it for 10 weeks or more. Now, very interesting topic about melanoma. We know that not all patients with melanoma respond to immune therapy. Immune therapy... Chemotherapy is not working on melanoma, almost not working. And uh, before, these patients uh, had no chance. But now, immune therapy, it activates immunity against melanoma. And some patients can even uh, be healed, even they have a lot of metastasis all over the body. But some patients don't respond to melanoma at all. Why? There is some connection between microbiome and melanoma response and its aggressiveness. For example, Maisel and her colleagues, they fed the mice with melanoma with probiotic Lactobacillus reuteri. And they found out that this Lactobacillus was uh, observed in the blood of these mice and also in the tumor. That means this bacteria was spreading from the guts to the tumor. And it was living there for some time. And it made these tumors more visible for immunity. The immune cells came there probably to fight bacteria, but also it found the tumor. And these mice started to have a good effect of immune therapy. And also, even if you don't treat them, these mice survived much longer than those mice that are not fitted with this probiotic. And this effect was seen not only in melanoma, but also adenocarcinoma and breast cancer, in fibrosarcoma, for example. By the way, this bacteria produces I3A substance, that is possible, possibly um, that is important to fight cancer. And this is produced from uh, amino acid tryptophan. And tryptophan is uh, contained in good qual uh, quantities in soybeans, in um, oats, nuts, chicken or sunflower seeds. That's why when these mice got these products, they were surviving better and struggling with the tumor better. And also, this effect was not limited to lactobacillus reuteri. Also, uh, this, there is another investigation uh, where they used bacterioides that were having similar effect in increasing immunity coming to the tumor and uh, fighting the tumors better. By the way, if we take the bacteria from patients who responded well to immune therapy with melanoma and put this bacteria into the mice with melanoma, these mice will have a very good effect against immune therapy and um, their tumors will grow much slower. But if we take the gut flora from the patients with melanoma who got immune therapy but there was no effect and melanoma is growing fast and aggressively and put this bacteria to mice with melanoma, these mice will have a very aggressive tumor and no response to immune therapy. Very interesting, right? These are some side effects possible, but uh, these are only 
minor cases and as you understand many thousands of patients are getting probiotics only some side effects not all are obligatory connected to uh, the use of probiotics and mostly it's yeast probiotics like sac saccharomyces and i want to do, make some conclusions i want to underline that it's not official recommendations or official conclusions uh, recommendations for cancer patients it's some of uh, my conclusions based on what i told you today first of all probiotic can help to reduce risk of uh, cancer by neutralizing cancerogen by uh, tuning the immunity the inflammation and uh, directly attacking the tumor cells next if the patient already has cancer it may help reduce inflammation reduce obesity blood lipids uh, it can help uh, to support liver very important for cancer patients especially having metastasis to liver for example or having cirrhosis or having uh, uh, cancer chemotherapy also it can help with diarrhea uh, chemotherapy uh, patients probiotics may help uh, to make tumor more visible to immune therapy to improve the immune therapy effectiveness and this proved in uh, lactobacilli rotary or bacterioides and probiotic combinations are mostly better than single ones especially if you combine it with prebiotic for example lactobacilli plus uh, bifidobacteria plus enterococcus or streptococcus and one more thing we know that uh, risks are seem to be not uh, very major and uh, seems to be rare but still uh, just in case if the immunity falls too much if uh, the patient has very low leukocytes neutrophils uh, for example during chemotherapy uh, then maybe it's worth not taking bacteria at this moment of time please always check the description under video if i get any new information i will add there also there will be a link uh, some links uh, to the articles i used and also you can find them because there is a name and authors there on the screen and uh, again my name is dr igor atabekov i'm clinical oncologist i wish you good health lots of energy god bless you bye bye